Bonjour, and welcome to another episode of For Real. I'm your host, Devlin Wilder. You have most likely seen or heard him on many of your favorite shows and movies, including A Futile and Stupid Gesture, Another Period, Bob's Burgers, Veep, and even The X-Files. The sequel to his darkly surreal special, Mr. Neighbor's House, premieres on Adult Swim Sunday, June 24th. Of course, I'm talking about Brian Husky, and you don't want to miss his return as the Berenstain Bears reality Mr. Rogers, in which Jim finds out more about his past, which opens up all sorts of new existential adventures for him and his cohorts. The special also stars Mary Holland of the legendary improv group Wild Horses, and has lots of other fun and twisted surprises. Let's rock and roll with episode 25 with Brian Husky. I mean, just like every room is <laughs> mic'd. Really? Well, no, is that no. How got- no, they usually, I mean, I think he's he presses the button before they're aware that... Oh, sure. Yeah, because they're always at, are, have we started? He's like, oh, yeah, we already started. Hardwick does that, too. Oh, yeah. He just lets it roll. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes as they're walking into the hallway, yeah. like on their way into the studio or whatever, he does that. Yeah. Um, now, Mark moved out of his garage, right? I guess He's, so. Yeah. He, I, I saw he posted on Instagram or whatever, but I guess he, he moved into a full, a full official studio or something. That's got to be good. That would probably alleviate some element of depression where he's like, I'm just going to walk into the room and record <laughs> stuff and go back to my house. I would never think so, leave. right. Yeah. See, that's the thing with me. I like doing it in an actual studio because, yeah. um, uh, you know, it's it's more official. It's more professional. I mean, you would rather come to a regular studio, right? Do you want to go to someone's garage? Probably I don't know. Not. How nice is your garage? <laughs> that's true. You know? That's true. Can you op- open it up so we can watch the kids on the street? <laughs> right. Well, Hey guys, we start? So that amazing voice <laughs> that you are hearing right now is Brian Husky, the star of every single thing on TV right now. I don't know if I'm the star. I'm the <laughs> the, the the extra guy in a lot of things. He is he is a professional that guy, actually. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> Yeah, I just got my card the other day. I, you just got your card? Yeah. Yeah. That guy in big bold that guy. italic letters. Yeah, they had a huge list of all these people. I was like, I know their face. I don't know. Oh, that's his name? Oh, that's cool. I never knew that. That should be the next, like the the official list on Entertainment Weekly, mm-hmm. like the the fifty best that guys or girls. Yeah, I w- I'd like to pitch a show that is only you, you only cast the that right. guys and the that girls exactly. And then people are like, "Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't have a star. I'm not going to watch this." <laughs> exactly. That's the whole point. Though. Yeah, I yeah. love that idea. Yeah, that's the hook. It's a yeah. It's a guaranteed one seasoner, and then you're just exactly yeah. But that's all you need. Totally. It doesn't. It doesn't need to go into uh, syndication or anything. It's well, the just, agreement is, and anyone who gets cast is like, none of you will become a star. Right. Right. Just right. no matter what happens, if it starts to happen, we shut this down. Exactly. You it's just, done. It's toast. You just stay real. <laughs> you just keep right. it real, bro. Keeping it real, baby. Keep it real, bro. Uh, thank you so much for for uh, coming over here. Yeah. In the rain today. Yeah. It's, it's raining for you know it it that's. That never happens in LA, it's so exciting. which is uh, one of the one of the great reasons I don't drive. Yeah, um, I'm one of the crazy. You ones. don't drive I don't at have all? a car here in LA. I Dang. I do uh, I do Uber all over the. Well, I try as as much as possible to take Metro. Yeah, um, and I won't bore you with this story because I've brought it up so many times on the show. But I freaking hate Metro. It it's, does not work. No, in it's. This ta- like, I've not it's, heard. It's like it, it's like it's invisible. Yeah, it, it just it's a complete mess. I've done. I did a bus thing from like Silver Lake, the area I live in, to downtown, and it was an epic journey of the self. That just I was like, <laughs> I should have walked. I mean, I, I literally should have walked. It yeah. just would have been much yeah. better. Epic journey isn't uh, is a severe understatement. It, oh, yeah, it yeah. really is. It takes hours and hours to get everywhere. Yeah, and. The, the bus is never – see, I said I wasn't going to do it, and I always there go into go. it anyway. The, the bus never comes – it's always early or late. It never comes on time. But there, I, how how could it, like, in the city – It can't. No, it's like Mexico City. I'm sure they're, like – I mean, their they're trains, their they're subway system is great, but their buses are just like, yeah. it's a whimsical kind of, like, <laughs> yeah. maybe kind of thing. Right. You know. Yeah. It's a weather, it's a weather-based kind of thing. It's like, yeah. maybe if it's cloudy, the bus will come. Maybe right. Not. Who knows? Well, 
uh, with the rain. That's why I don't want to be on the roads mm. because LA drivers don't don't comprehend how to drive in any sort of weather. Oh yeah, yeah. We always just saying to your to your, uh, if the yeah that it's like early. It's like oh, this is pre this is pre snow. Like, <laughs> and we don't know how to drive in snow. So have you lived in snow? I've never no, well yeah I lived in New York I lived in New mm-hmm. York for ten years uh, but I was I'm from North Carolina so we okay. would get snow every th- two or three years and maybe like a you know two inches or something sure so but like I was there for a really big dump one time and mm. I was like wow this is for real oh yeah it is sky like, dumps are no joke yeah it was a it was yeah it was I've been trapped in my house many times because of snow dumps from where uh, Southern Illinois okay yeah yeah. Um, not so much in a really long time. They haven't had any real snowstorms in a long time, but, yeah. but when I was little, yeah, I mean, it, it, it happened all the time. Yeah. It's just like, you know, try to open the door and it's just packed in. So yeah, it's amazing. no thanks. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's beautiful. Sure. It's cool. In New York, it's beautiful for a few days and then it just turns into like a, like a, a reminder of how dirty the world is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's on the streets, so it's as gritty as the streets. Streets yeah. in New York get into the snow and stuff. So speaking, uh, speaking of dirty and mm-hmm. and uh, moving into disturbing, uh, mm. I want to go inside your brain a little bit because sure. I've been, uh, uh, which I, I you know I got to put on my spelunking gear to to get <laughs> in there because honestly, uh, so I watched the first na- Mister Neighbor's House. Good, good for you. Thank you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Let's let's talk about your trauma. Have okay. a, have a, have a Wait, have uh, you seen lay, the, lay across my couch? Did you are, What's going on? Is this in there? leading up to the second one? Did you see it, the second one too? I did. Okay, that's I, good. I am very proud to say I have I have the the sneak peek all yeah, in my head and yeah. it was uh uh it was it was pretty out there, man. Yeah. Well it, done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I I will admit that like when we did the second one, I was like I came away I was like, "Ooh, man, that was uh that one's even darker." <laughs> Yes. But yeah, yeah, I don't, I know. What is your childhood trauma? I don't have any, really. <laughs> <laughs> not those things. I mean, that's not true. Like, I grew up, you know, everybody kind of grew Every everybody's family has something. Even if it's not in your immediate family, there's an uncle, a, a you know, distant relative or something. And that kind of has, like, ripple effects within, you know, the legacy, whether it's sort of like denying that it's happening or it becomes inflated into this this other storyline and stuff. Um, and I, you know, my, I didn't meet my dad till I was 16, I think. And then I grew up with wow. uh, my, my mom remarried and I grew up with a guy uh, who, who raised me and I love him and he's no longer uh, with us, but he had some some drinking problems and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I know a lot of like a lot of that stuff is sort of like filtered in in different forms, you know, into whether it's into this or like into improv or I, I think a lot of like the characters that I cast it as are these kind of like repressed, you know, every man that have like a little bit of rage underneath and stuff. Sure. And I don't it's interesting that there's that um Andy and Me, do you know that documentary with Jim Carrey? Oh yes, yes. I haven't doing, seen it yet. But it's yes, great. very familiar with it. It's, I've I've heard glowing reviews yeah. from everybody that's seen it. And the mo- like the the biggest takeaway for me was him kind of tracking all the stuff that he was cast in, all the different movies, Truman Show, The Mask, mm-hmm. um, it, just him on Living Color the the need to disappear into these other characters like so deeply and that they all had sort of a uh, a through line of um uh, of not knowing who they were and trying to figure that out. I don't know if Ace Venture is actually that, <laughs> that true. I'm really like, reading into that one. <laughs> who is he? Does he love dogs or cats? Like who is this guy? But uh but it was like interesting just you know, directors or writers kind of pick up on something about a performer that they're giving off that maybe they're not aware of, and uh, I, th- I, you know, I, I only say all this stuff not to sort of like sound you know, to elevate or be lofty about what I do. It's just kind of like having a perspective of like, well, why does this happen, and what you know, what kind of work do I end up doing? Um, and then when I'm giving the opportunity to do my own thing, I, I. I'm okay. I'm always okay with like I go dark. That's fine. That's how I, I work. love dark. Yeah, and, and it so helps to have that empathic reasoning. 
you know, when yeah. you're working with uh, with actors and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so along those lines, let's talk about Mary Holland because mm -hmm. I I love her so much and yeah. she's so silly and wild and and out there. Right. Um, I uh, I keep trying to get to see Wild Horses shows at right. Largo and I keep missing it. Um, she's so wonderful. Yeah, she's um, great. Did you uh, did you do shows with her? Did you work with her? I before? I like coached a group, an improv group that she was doing with a few other UCB people before she sort of you know, broke out a little bit. And I was like, oh my god, who's this? Who's this young like Lucille Ball lady? Mm -hmm. uh, and then she sat in a few times. We did a show on Fridays at Upright Citizens Brigade Theater on uh, Franklin at Franklin. Uh, called Soundtrack, and so we asked her to join that group. Okay. Um, so she's part of, and that group, like we, at best, we usually have like four or five of us because we kind of like, thankfully, get, you know, work comes up. Um, so yeah, so she's part of that group, so that's how I, I know her. And then we'd done a pilot, originally, so with Mr. Neighbor's house, we had done a, a did a pilot. We had done a pilot. Um, uh, that was hopefully going to be like a 15-minute you know, another 15 minute programming series. Um, and they were like, we're not going to do the pie, the series, but you can do a special. So that's what turned into the special. And originally we had a different actress um, playing Miss Lady. Uh, but I, you know, now that Mary's done it, I, she has like elevated it in such a, such a perfect way. Like just so without trying much, like she's just very, just sort of like, she just did these little things We're like, Oh man, that's such a sweet little like twist to it. It's, it's cool, the, and she's cool to hang out with. I love her. The I best mean. ones always always do that. They always yeah. have that that little nuance, mm -hmm. you know, that you that you catch on screen. It's so it's so beautiful and wonderful to yeah. to see that. And uh, she she plays Demented so well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Like I've heard her on a couple of podcast things, sort of refer to. Her saying, like, well, I just kind of, I assume, like, I just always come from this place that people, I'm like, I bother people or that uh, I've upset them or whatever. Like, an insecurity thing that I completely identify with. And Me you know, three. Yeah. And <laughs> and so her, her people's reaction is like, oh, no, people love you and stuff. And, it and you know, what people, what people, the internal dialogue and then the perspective other people have on you is very different. And, and that's kind of, I mean, the, like with with Mr. Neighbor's house, is, it is that thing of like the internal dialogue of the human mind is a, is a shit show. Like you just, you can't, it's like the most unreliable narrator is yourself inside your head. Um, and that's that's kind of the thing we wanted to play with of just like, what, like, what is this reality? Whose reality is it? Can you even trust it? Um, I was reading something the other day that I found so uh, interesting and intriguing, which was that, you are a different person to every single person mm -hmm. that you ever meet. So right. uh, I love dabbling in multiple, you know, realities and the multiverse and mm -hmm. all of that sort of thing. And there are, I mean, there are, there's a multiverse inside your head, inside my head, inside yeah. everyone's head all the time. Right. Because... You know, you may uh, walk out of the show going, that guy was <laughs> completely insane, mm -hmm. which is true. Meaning myself. Um, <laughs> points of self. <laughs> right, <to> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, it's yeah. so very interesting. It's such, like I have a, a daughter, she's 11, and I, it, that, like having a kid is just like, like the biggest kind of like, you look at your, you look at her. I'm looking at myself. You know this thing that makes you consider yourself and check yourself. If you're kind of, if if you're in it, I think there are definitely a lot of adult parents who are like, ah, I don't know, fucking kid, go whatever. <laughs> but like, I think in terms of like how many different people she's going to be coming up to who the cumulative idea of who she is to all these people over in, in the span of time she's going to be around. It's it's crazy, and and she and she will always kind of be redefining herself. Um, I because I I don't I I have a vague idea of what I was at eleven, but not you know like it's crazy how few sort of definitive memories I have of like eleven. Just kind of a vibe. What's <laughs> what's your favorite memory from from when you were little? What what's something that comes up in your in your headspace? Uh, I don't know if it's my favorite one, but I think. 
like my one of my earliest memories was a birthday party. I lived with like we lived in my grandmother's house for a while before my mom remarried, and so it was a birthday party. And I was given a Fisher Price little ambulance that you sit on and kind of push with your legs, and you can open up the back and put the little action figures in and stuff. And I was just riding around the kitchen. And I remember like bonking into people's ankles. And everybody would be like, ah, ha, ha. And I could tell that they were being bothered, that they were, it was my birthday, but they're like, ah, you right. know. And then, Knock it off, kid. Yeah, then at a point, somebody's like, had to shut it down. Right. And I was like, but it's my birthday. I don't understand. <laughs> and I, I remember, I just remember that feeling of like that shift of like, wee this is great. Oh, oh, you know, they had to kind right. of like, get back into it and snap back seconds later. But <laughs> well, it all comes back around. Obviously there are lots of shadows in that mm. in, in Mr. Neighbor's house, which, yeah. which flow through. Yeah. Um, I think like with, as far as the show, it, it, you know, people, they, you know, people saying like, well, so what's up with you? What's your thing? In all honesty, like we we're dealing with a man who, who lost his mind and so we were trying to find stakes and circumstances that were kind of easily digested in in like the short amount of time we had for the show, plus sort of like putting on this layer of like comedy amongst all the weird stuff that would make sense. So we couldn't get into like, you know, some kind of childhood trauma that's related to something he saw that's related to this or that. It had to be something definitive that he did. And in the same one, the first one, like his his mom left and so that – fucked him up in the second one we can't say what it is but it's something else spoiler spoiler something happens <laughs> um so i think it's you know people always was like the i actually like the kind of that that thing of people being a little re- revulsion of like oh my god that's too it's too too much and it's like it's just something happened to somebody the thing is when something bad happens to someone and they lose their mind if an organ fails, you get surgery and you get it replaced and then your body works again. If your mind fails, the expression of that is behavior and and beha- people react to behavior. And so they can't deal with that a person is being this other person. You know, it's because, I don't know, it's, we're, we kind of reflect each other in a way. So you're like, oh like a God. mirror. And yeah. sometimes that mirror gets cracked. And your yeah, psyche man. starts to leak demons yeah. inside your head. Let's load up that bong, <laughs> man. Let's talk about it, man. <laughs> oh boy, do I have some demons? That's that's like five shows worth of <laughs> yeah conversation. What's well, fascinating, like you think about like David Lynch, like he, you know, everybody's like, oh my god, that guy's so fucked up. He meditates every day. Right. He paints. He's just interested in those in that territory, you know, and it's the kind of thing of. If you repression is so much worse than uh, examination, in a, in a, in Bingo. a big way. Bingo. It's, keeping keeping all of that darkness yeah. inside is is what makes your you know your brain into a bomb. Right. And then eventually, it's going to go. It's yeah. going to explode. And depending on the way that you handle yourself, mm-hmm. um, and just like David Lynch, he he got to he got to a point where he figured out his darkness. Yeah. Is the thing. Yeah. Yeah. We all have it. He got to a point where he's like, you know, there's there's a point of control. Right. There's there's a way to manage it. Yeah. And uh he's done that in an excellent way. Yeah. As as you have presenting Thanks. it in your art and your work. Yeah. And besides all the dark stuff, you've done a lot of fun stuff too. <laughs> uh you've been on Veep. Yep. Um you've done uh, Bob's just didn't burgers, grab my words. Bob's, Bob's burgers. burgers. Yes. Yeah. Bob's Burgers is so much fun. So good, yeah. so good, such a great show. Yeah, I made uh, I made a lot of my friends, uh, my improv friends, upset that mm-hmm. I was going to be with here, with that you were going to be my guest. Oh, Not you? upset, but very jealous. Oh, that's nice. Because uh, they're big, they're big Bob's Burgers fans. Yeah, that's it, hard to say. Yeah, Bob's Burgers fans. <laughs> yeah, that's a great show. That's a a lovely environment where there's like, oh yeah, they give you all this Veep too. Like they just they're very res. They invest in the the people they hire. Like, hey, you're good. Do your thing. You know, which feels great. That's that's cool. So they yeah. they really let you kind of take take the reins when when you're working on that show. Yeah, yeah. And they will they will if they have a particular thing they need, they'll let you know. Um, but they they don't sort of like I I done, I've done some other animated stuff, and I the other di- the other difference the other difference the difference is with. Bob's is you usually record with the other actors. So it's a very live 
thing. Okay. And some other ones, you just you just go in and just. It's do, just you in the booth. Yeah, yeah. And I was I was not quite ready for just like oh it's just me and oh you want me to like you will really be directing how I say this you know. And, oh wow, that's cool. Yeah, which was I I mean it, I didn't I don't think I did the best job with it. I I felt more in my head of like, oh Ugh. come on <laughs> no seriously but I mean but I guess it, it's that thing of if you can. I don't know. Those those times I've done, I can tell work that I've done where I'm like, oh, I was a little in my head. I was a little sort of like feeling like there's something I was not doing that they expected, you know, which happens. Sure. Yeah. We all do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As performers. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's our, that's our number one. That, yeah. That, that thought, you know, circulating in our mind all the time. Yeah. Am I doing this right? Yeah. Like on the show right now, am I, uh, is this going okay? Oh, you're um, nailing it. I, uh, not <laughs> really sure. I mean, if you'd <laughs> stop talking about the rain, it would be great, but God fine, damn let's go rain, back and, son of a bitch. No, you're nailing it because like out of the gate, you talked about uh, Mr. Neighbor's House, which I was, you know, I've done some things where they're at the very end, they're like, so you have a, a thing coming on at Delta Swim? I was like, yeah, well, we have one minute. You want to tell us about it? I'm like, oh, <laughs> come spin, on. Spin, spin, spin. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've done a lot of podcasts too. You're all over the place. You, uh, I, you're you recurring on Womp It Up, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seth Wampler, <laughs> her, her stepdad. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah. That's a fun one. That's uh, cool. Yeah, and Improv for Humans and a few other ones, yeah. I've done Comedy Bang Bang. I was actually thinking today, I was like, I don't do a good job on Comedy Bang Bang. And if, <laughs> Scott Ackerman, if you're hearing this, just please totally acknowledge that. And it's like, it's, I was very taken aback of like, you kind of go in with like a character and, and the game, like their job is to fuck with that character. Right. And I'm like, no, wait, improv, you have to support me and stuff. And then I think I've just, every time I, I just feel like I'm like, Ooh, and messed up. <laughs> I think that's the most fun for Scott, though. I really yes. do. Yeah. I think he really enjoys when characters just go right right off the bridge. Yeah. Because then it it gives him more fuel to pick it up. Right. Um, and he's, you know, he's so great at that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's that's one of my one of my dreams, I got to tell you, oh, yeah. is, is to be on Comedy Bang Bang. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that would be an absolute blast. The very first one I did was him and Bob Odenkirk. Holy crap. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> so terrified because he's like, Odenkirk's a hero of mine. Sure, and, mine too. Yeah. And I met him a couple times, like at auditions and stuff. And the first time I was just like, hey, da, da, you know, and I knew that he kind of had like a, a gruff, a gruff countenance and stuff. Mm -hmm. but now I'm like, I don't think he has a gruff. I think he's just kind of like a guy and, you know, he, he doesn't seek this stuff out and people say these things and he's just like, oh, thanks. Appreciate it. But they both just like eviscerated my my character within. <laughs> Did they? Yeah, they're in a very like, oh come on, let me get two sentences out before you undermine everything about it. <laughs> so I was very. But that's all part of the fun. I know, know but I didn't know that. I was like, <laughs> I don't want this fun to be happening this way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Um. That's it's so great. Uh, that's. It's one of the reasons I love doing this show mm -hmm. is because I get to pull in all sorts of uh, cool people. Like it's it's like it's a little surreal mm -hmm. that you know that you're here and like I had Janet Varney in on yeah. the show, and it, it's so cool to talk to people about all of the all of the great things that they're doing and mm -hmm. like stuff that I'm watching and they just appear in the studio with me. And yeah, that's it's, cool. It's just, it's just pretty, pretty awesome. It is funny though, because I, I, do you find like a through, I mean, do you find like in talking to different actors, performers, creators and mm -hmm. stuff that the kind of consistency of people being like, really, you knew about that? Like I, 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 I can only speak for my own perspective, but I'm always kind of like, I feel like my, my existence within the career I have, I'm very proud of and very happy with, but I'm also sort of like, sometimes I'm like, I didn't nobody knows who I am. Like, I'm just, I, you know, I do like improv and I appear here and there and I get to pay for my daughter to do things. And that's, that's all I want, you know, but it's always interesting hearing, you know, it's like business feedback. Like, Oh really? You know about these other things that I do, which is, right. which is great. But I, I, you know, I don't know. Have you found that with different, like most performers they are like, Oh yeah, cool. Thanks. I didn't, it, I'm, 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 I'm it depends making the most on the vague, guest. vague It depends point. on the guest. No, it, it really does. Um, some are, some are very LA yeah. and some are very humble. 
you know? Are the uh, LA ones <laughs> destined to be? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait to tell you who after the, sh- after yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the button is released. But, yeah. um, you know, it, most people, 99% of the guests that I have on the show are just like, they, they're just happy to be yeah. in the room, right. you know, just happy to be doing a thing. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, I, I love that Chris Hardwick is always talking about, you know, do your thing. Mm-hmm. You have a thing, do the thing. Right. Don't make excuses. Don't, don't you know, kick the dirt. Do the thing. Right. Make it happen. Mm-hmm. However you have to do that, and this is my thing. Yeah. You know, um, in whatever little piece of the, of the, you know, greater echelon I'm able to propel my art. Yeah. This is, this is it. Yeah. I like having conversations with people. I like finding out about about them as much as finding out about their art yeah. and, and what they do and why they love it. Do you think, because you, you're, are you a regular improviser or are you sort of, have you been doing? I dabble. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cause I think that's a big thing with like improvisers is there is the implicit sort of like practice. There's just the practice of sort of like support. Right. You know, there's the practice of sort of like you're. Yes. You, and yeah. Yes. And or you're, you're, you, you are part of something bigger mm-hmm. that's being made and stuff. And I, you know, more and more with how many fucking channels and platforms there are, it is like just do your thing and just let that exist as it is because you're not going to – like if you go in with the to the goal of sort of becoming famous or, you know, having this other end result thing, it just, just, just make a living doing it. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. Just, just you're a shoemaker. Make shoes. <laughs> Don't worry about if you become flu ball. Yes, exactly. And yeah. there's some pretty rich shoemakers out there. Yeah, so. yeah. I think that that that's always been a struggle with me of just like the knowing the stakes. You go into a situation, an audition or something like the stakes are you could not get this or you could get it and it could change your life. Just go do that. Just make that a casual sort of like job interview you're going to go do. Are you still auditioning? I mean, do yeah. you have to audition yes. for things? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it varies. You know, I, I think I benefit from... Having worked with a lot of people, they move on to other shows and they're kind enough to be like, oh, I think he could do this. But definitely there's stuff you have to still audition for. I would love not to. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, what a day that oh, would be. yeah, totally. <laughs> what is your carte blanche? Uh, if you could if you could be working on any project, uh, work with anyone, mm. who else would you like to work with and, and on what? Oh, uh, let's see. I would love to be like on Legion. Ooh. I'm just talking about like shows I love. Yeah. Like Legion or there was a there was a mini series for Hulu that I did audition for that I didn't get, which I would have loved to have done. Damn it. Damn it. Oh man. I I don't know. It's funny. That's like, great. Yeah. I I like the fact like the that I get to do Veep is one of my happiest things. Unbelievable. Yeah. And I just I was like, that's I'm very proud to be because that is like one of the best TV shows ever. Oh, uh, one hundred percent. And absolutely. And I got to do an X Files this year. That's um, right. Yeah, which We're was X Files. Which is the episode was like me and them pretty much the whole episode. <sighs> and I didn't I didn't watch that show, but when I got it and people's reaction, I was like, oh, this is a serious thing. Like this is a this is one of those icon yeah. shows. My nerd heart is beating faster. Yeah. At the mention of X Files. It yeah. was cool. It was. Easily one of my favorite work experiences. It was just so great. So great. Are they chill? They're chill. They're very chill. They're, you know, I think they I think they rested easy knowing that I was funny <laughs> and, and <laughs> didn't get up in their face too much and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a, a kind of a slow progression of just like, okay, now we're chatting. Now we're chatting more. And then, all right, now, you know, you got your time alone. Did you play a comical character well it's this guy you know darren morgan he does the kind of uh the weird funny meta episodes Mm -hmm. so he had done one last year with that kumail um right nanjani and um who's running the 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 pet store yeah and reese darby i think right right yeah they were both in he was the lizard man yeah yeah so he i was not aware of his kind of stuff but i guess he does though those kind of weird let's just fuck with the genre episodes and awesome. so that's what this one was. So he told me, he's like, all right, this is probably going to be very confusing for you because your audition, you were, you know, you played the drama of it and it was great. He's like, but I'm going to have you 
do other weird takes. So I would like literally do a take where I'd do it, you know, sort of written as like, you know, TV sort of like thriller drama and then do one where it, he's like, now I want you to do sort of like a 1930s uh, slapstick noir take on it. And, Whoa. You know, or like lean into this line or like give me a big eye roll here. Um, and he's like, do this one completely flat. He would just do these just totally bizarre options and – and I was like, all right, I trust you, you know your thing. And then the end result, I was like, yeah, that that works. But a friend of mine saw it and he was like, oh, okay, yeah, because some of the some of the stuff he did was weird. And I was like, yeah, he told me to do it. I didn't it was Has this episode aired? Yeah. Yeah. It, it has? Yeah, it's called Great. I'm it, gonna watch it as soon as we get done. <laughs> it's called The Lost Lost Art of Forehead Sweat. And I That's play so great. a guy named Reggie something is my character. So cool. Yeah, it was fun. That's fantastic. To be a part of that that level of legendary series. I mean yeah. to be a part of X Files and Veep, dude. Yeah, it's you're pretty, you're that's a good life. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. It's nice. It's good to be able to 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 be in a place of gratitude about it. And I only say that Kind of going back to like my question about uh, people coming in and and what their perspective on what they do is because there's so much uncertainty in this job that sometimes like oh yeah that's a great that's a great thing that I got to do for two weeks but what's ahead I don't know what the hell is ahead and right I literally had a a, a time where I woke up one time and in the middle of the night it's like I don't have a plan I have no plan in place I I don't know what I'm doing and then I calmed down and I was like. The plan is what you've been doing for the past 15 years, which is you just are an actor and performer. And so you just do it. Go to the next doing thing, the thing. Do the thing. And there'll yeah. be times that the thing is not around and then right. some random thing will happen. But you you have such an amazing body of work already. Thanks. And it's continuing to come in and you have a, you have a wonderful family. You said mm -hmm. you have a daughter. Yeah. That's, that's pretty special. That's a good one. She's good. She's cool. So you mentioned Legion. Are you mm -hmm. a Marvel fan? Mm, nah, kind it's of. Just that particular show. That show, you know, I mean, it hits my sweet spot. Of like, ooh, the human mind? Yeah, let's go into right. it. Uh, I mean, a schizophrenic superhero is a great premise. Indeed. So great. And they do such a great job uh, with that, of just not sort of hanging around the, the, the territory of just like twitchy um, asylum scenes and stuff. Like they... Which I hope we kind of did in, in our in Mr. Neighbors too, like go absolutely, you know, deep, 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 deep. Mm -hmm. Because there are a couple episodes I watched. I was like, I don't know it. I don't know. I don't know who he like the Shadow King. I know who he is, but I don't. And you know, it's it gets very confusing. But I like that. I like shows. I mean, that's why I, I love like David Lynch and stuff. The ones where you're like, I don't know the. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I got to go back and work on this. Yeah. Mind fucks are my favorite. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Have you seen Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because I, I, I picked up a lot of echoes oh, of, really? of that. I watched a little bit. Like before we did the, the the pilot and stuff, we watched some other things like Wonder I, I was a big fan of Wonder Shows. Wonder Shows, and, yeah. And... And then I even kind of went back and like tried to find weird 70s and 80s like stuff online of just other kid shows. So we were trying not to ape too much of that stuff. But oh, no, and I wasn't, I wasn't oh, saying yeah, yeah. That, that that was the case. Um, I just, I watch all of that stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I'm very aware of like, I, I love the very cerebral, you know, uh, spider webs of the mind yeah, and, yeah. and all of the threads bringing it together. Yeah. And part two, listeners, I can't wait for you to see this uh, <laughs> because it's, uh, woo. Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's incredible. That's great, man. That's good. I, I genuinely was for a while, I was like, oh, I don't know. People are not, I don't know. Just insecurity kind of hanging around with it. Because it's so, it's, yeah, because it's just a thing that's very different than, than, what I get cast for normally, or, you know, you just put your name on something, you write something and you starve it. It's, it's, it's vulnerable guys. It's hard, <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. Let's see who else worked. Uh, Jason Manzukas worked on this with you. Yeah. Jason and our friend, Jesse Falcon, who works at Marvel. 
Um, oh, yeah, he, wow. he's like a toy designer and, and now he's sort of in charge of just like their, a lot of their rollout stuff, but his, he is the, the, the gentleman in, uh, who came up with Hulk hands. Oh really? Yeah. Oh wow. Isn't that awesome? That's pretty cool. That's a cool one. And I think that's him, like him going, Hulk oh, smash, like, you know, that's his voice on there. Um, but we're, we all do soundtrack together and Jason mm-hmm. and I have written movies, uh, together, you know, in the past and stuff. And then Rob Corddry right. is the, the other EP and Rob and I were, you know, performed together for years and we were roommates for a long time. Ah, yeah. Awesome. He, Rob is the reason I got into comedy. I was a photographer before this. So, okay. Yeah. So he's the one who said like, oh, you're funny. You should do this. And I just <laughs> wanted somebody because I was going to do it. I was like, me? Okay, yes. I want to do this too. So. Do you think like in one of those uh, multiple realities, if you hadn't uh, followed the trajectory of comedy, do you think you would have done photography or pa- uh, perhaps a psychiatrist? Or I don't know. I mean, I thought about that. If I, yeah, if I had stayed with that one girl who moved to Boston and then I had gone to a photo school up there, what? would that become? Because I even when I was thinking of doing that, I was like, oh, Boston has all the comedy clubs. So I think I've, I, I, I've always wanted to do this stuff, like always. It's, but I just kind of like was scared of it. So, no, I like were, to think all, all my realities lean back to some, lead to some version of it. <laughs> some version of God. If it, you you would have been a very funny psychiatrist. If, Thank you. If, yeah. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I could have ended up like a Telemundo character or something. Oh my God, that, that would be amazing. <laughs> I can totally see that. Yeah, you worked with the Fantastic Four and your UCB group, right? In New yeah, York? yeah, they were all my teachers. Those four, plus this other amazing instructor named Ar- Armando Diaz, who I th- I think he runs a theater in New York now. But I, yeah, I would early early wave of all that stuff. Like second round of classes was when I got to take stuff. And it's nuts. Like when you think about the people that were my contemporaries, because it's like. Cordry, John Bowie, Seth Morris, who we all became a sketch group together, mm-hmm. Rob Hubel, Rob Riggle, Paul Shear, Andy Daly, just nuts. Unbelievable. Yeah, Billy Merritt, this great uh, improviser, Chris Gethard. When he came later, but we performed with him and stuff. Who else? Just, yeah, nuts. And then Jason and Jessica St. Clair were sort of like uh, the next round of classes after us. Um, and I became Jay's friends with Jason mm-hmm. because we started playing music together and then started playing badminton together. <laughs> That's how we bonded. <laughs> tell me about the, tell me about badminton. I have oh, no dude. idea. I, it's the best. I don't know anything about this game. Well, there's the badminton that is the, the shitty net that you get at CVS and you set up at a barbecue where right. people sort of like, they can't, can't get the birdie over the net because it weighs like, you know, two ounces and they give up. And then there's the version that is a professional racket by Yonix. And then you get the actual feather birdies. And ah. you can really fucking wing those guys in there. I don't know what, like, I was never, it, I, I was always, my athletic side, I shy. Like, I just didn't believe in myself for the longest time. I was kind of dumpy when I was a kid. And so one summer I found badminton and I was good at it. And like, oh my God, I love this so much. <laughs> so it's kind of, it's a little bit of reclaiming a lost sort of athleticism that I once had. <laughs> and I'm sure like, I, you know, I feel like when I'm playing it, I love it. But I was joking with a friend I was playing with. I was like, we should film ourselves and just see how ridiculous we look. Because I'm sure we just look like these flailing middle-aged men <laughs> out in the Legion Park. Just hitting. I'd watch that. Oh, my God. Yeah. I should pitch that <laughs> to that Adult Swim. Put that 15 minutes on Adult Swim. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah put that in the, next to the Fish Tank TV. Yeah. I, I can't. I just found out that Glendale has open badminton at the Y. Ooh. So that's a that's a game changer oh, for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Very, <laughs> I can't, it's, I'm so happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> I used to live in Glendale. I yeah. kind of miss it. Yeah? yeah? Where did you live? I was like right off Glen Oaks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. cool. You know, it's cool neighborhoods. Yeah. Lots of dogs everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I suppose that's LA, but. I know a lot of people are moving over there. And it's above the. 134 like that's right. a big kind of like settlement zone yeah yeah it's a little bit too far out now though right like, i want to i want to be in la proper oh, really? i want to keep going away from la <laughs> i do I would, I would love to live like in eagle rock or my my daughter's uh, mother lives over in altadena 
And I just, Altadena is great. It's too far for me. I think I'll be late for everything as I already <laughs> yeah. am. But it's just like, it just did it, such a little town feel. It's so nice. I'm so hmm. boring <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I, no, no, I totally feel you. I, yeah. I see my thing is I'm from the Midwest, so I got to have like, I have very much Midwest tastes. Mm -hmm. So I got to have fast food around, Oh yeah, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And I, you know, I'm one of the crazy ones, as mentioned. I don't have a car, so yeah, like, that's a that's. I I gotta walk, but I love to walk. Where I do love you walking? Where around. do you live I'm in now? Sherman Oaks right now. So that's that's, a, that's probably that's that, a, that's a, that's a. How do you tr travel? I don't know, man. I don't know. Well, <laughs> have you I done, got here today? Have you done the math on what like having a car versus Uber? I have Uber? done the math, and it and it bothered me a lot. So Are you I just don't more? do the math anymore. Really? <laughs> I I well. I'd take a Metro as much as possible. I didn't take, I did take an Uber here because I wanted to make sure and be early, right? you know, and all for all the technical blah, 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 blah yeah. But, uh, I, I do try to take Metro. I try to make myself take Metro as much as human. Is possible. there a, is there a, a Metro rail near you? So, or is it bus? Cause bus, I, c I can't. So where I bus. work, I take the, well, if it's during the weekdays, God, this is so boring, listener. Sorry. Uh, I take the, <laughs> or, or some people are like, ooh, <laughs> oh, now wait I got a minute. good. Uh, pulling up the map now. I take the 734 on weekdays to like all the way across Westwood and past UCLA. And then I get on the expo line for three stops to Santa Monica because I work in Santa Monica. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's So that sounds like a... Like it's a, a it is i mean it takes me on a good day it's 90 minutes it's a 90 minute trip one way but do you use that time to just chill out of and course read and i stuff? mean i got yeah that's the I thing do, I i'm doing miss. work while i'm yeah while i'm traveling i do miss that in that's New York not true i'm listening of... to iheart radio <laughs> <laughs> i took my daughter to new york for the first time and we you know read the subway and stuff and we were on it a couple times during rush hour and then we're a couple times not and I was like, what do you think of the subway? She's like, I, you know, I like it when nobody's on the train. I was like, yeah, that's that's the ideal version of it. Absolutely. And and she's like, how much are other people on the train? I was like, you know, 85% of it, you're going to be crowded against other people. She's like, no, I don't want to live here. <laughs> yeah. She she kept, when we were there, we, she kept sort of parsing like, how could I live here? Would it be like this? Would it be like that? Da, da, da. I think basically we came away as like, you want to be very wealthy. <laughs> right. <laughs> and live here. Just just propel yourself yeah. towards that that angle. Yeah. We stayed at a friend's place who she lived in this apartment in Dumbo so it's before Dumbo was a thing, which is, do you know Dumbo? Do you know what that means? Mm -mm. Oh, it's, it stands for down underneath the Manhattan Bridge overpass. Oh. So it's like right on the waterfront. Used to be this big warehouse space uh, the artist, you know, moved into. Um and once that happens, then, you know, the the handbag stores are you know, not far behind. And right, sort of, of like, course. All that kind of stuff. So that's how it is now. Um, but it's beautiful. And her apartment is, you know, this huge floor through thing. And she was like, oh, yeah. I Yeah. Let's live here. This is cool. <laughs> so, yeah, of course. Yeah. You yeah, know, absolutely. Taste for the finer things, but, old lady. But the... The area I was in before Sherman Oaks was uh, was was Hollywood, mm -hmm. like right off Melrose Place. Right. So that was like I yeah yeah <laughs> I would love to be back there. Yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome. It's funny when you when you get to, when you stay in those kind of places. Like if I do a job and they put me up in a nice place, you kind of shift pretty easily into or I do like shifting is like oh yeah yeah I am entitled to this. <laughs> free water, you know, the longer uh -huh. you're there. Yeah. Right. Right. Which I can totally see how people lose sight of like how pe people come divas. Cause if you are just fed that on a daily basis, all day long, oh. constantly. Yeah. You're absolutely. just like, Oh, you're right. I am rarefied. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, but I can't I, end well. You know. I, I think you're, I think you're doing quite well. Oh, thanks. Your, your, your hats will all still fit you, Brian. That's cool. I'm not <laughs> impressed with the sort of concrete walls of this, uh, this, I think you oh, yes, painted well. it or something, but. <laughs> Sam, please it. get on that. Yeah. Let's just change this. Put some, uh, put some cool, uh, workaholics posters up in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's my vibe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's always interesting. The, 
the studio spaces. I was I was recording at the Nerdist Studio mm-hmm. just beside us before, right. and of course, you know. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> you know that you know. Uh, of course, we lost meltdown, so oh, yeah, yeah. that 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 all went away. But the nerd school all moved over here, and mm-hmm. uh, so this is this is very nice. So this so this the Ruby is now the the what was the nerd school? So yes. it's all all the classes and shows and stuff are here, or I think they transitioned as many as possible. Yeah, yes, that's mm-hmm. cool. I love that. Yeah, it's cool. What does that seem like? I'm I'm so out of. I mean, UCB has become a you know a behemoth of, of a, absolutely. It's crazy how many how many layers of human beings there are. <laughs> be, how removed yeah. I am from the you know the people like oh you did you did shows there a couple times like yeah kind of my whole life has been built around that. But I'm glad that there are other avenues for people to you know vin- venues and op- you know options. Of course. If we I have, went to UCB now at my, at the age, you know, going in there at like twenty eight or twenty nine, I'd be like, no, 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 I can't. This is too no, much. no way. I would, I would cut and run so hard, <laughs> and then I'd end up on Telemundo. That that would be the other reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah. Uh, that's racist. Sam, cut that. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> I was gonna just say. Do you ever jump into shows? Yeah, if, if I'm asked to, and I haven't done an ask out in so long, and they always ask like the night of. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I got my daughter tonight. I would love or, to see you in an ASCAT show. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I used to do a bunch in New York, but we're going to, uh, they're going to do the Del Close Marathon coming up. Uh, oh, good. Yeah, the 20th one, 20th anniversary. Awesome. That, which is so, so sobering to me. <laughs> that it's like, because everything, everything happened within the last 10 years to me. Like high school happened within the last 10 years. I started UCB within the last 10 years, you know, and my daughter is now 11, but that happened within the last 10 years. Wow. So it's really crazy when I, I have to put a time stamp on things. Like, yeah, that was, oh, fuck, that was 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting ready to go to my 20th high school reunion. So it's, that's, it's like. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. That's like, pretty you, weird, man. You're, yeah, it's like you're, you're he- like, I remember having a conversation, conversation with my mom. I was like, when do you grow up? And she's like, oh, you don't ever. I mean, you do, you learn how to become responsible and, you know, you learn adult skills and stuff. But internally, you'll probably be having a different version of the same conversation with yourself about different stuff. And I was like, but, you know, and I was very insecure at the time. I was like, so I'm always going to feel this way? It's like, no, you're not. You're, you, but you, you, the starting point will be the same. You know, I, I always think about that. Like, no matter how confident somebody is, there's, a, there's some little part of them that's still like a kid, you know, and it's just a question of how much you kind of like take care of that kid inside you. Or you're just like, shut up, kid. <laughs> Shove him to the back of the room. That's why I don't do drugs, man. No? <laughs> no? Because you don't want to meet your kid? <laughs> I, I <laughs> No, I mean, so I don't lose track of that mm. of that inner self. Oh yeah? And because I, I it, it it took me so long to really figure out not only what I wanted, but really who I was. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh pretty much only in the last few years, have I really gotten to a point where I'm secure enough in my psyche to be like, you know, I'm I'm strong enough to do this. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I I have I have great power of self. Yeah, that's know? good. I feel like my I I've been like it's plateaus. It's sort of like cumulative, and the more I give myself permission for that, you know, because I I think when I've been like, oh, I'm gonna figure it out, and that's it, and that's the definitive model for how life is going to be and there have been such big events in my life i'm like oh no that upends everything the plan is not in place what are you talking about i didn't you know i got divorced and that really like did the number on me i was like oh okay i gotta i gotta find out a new version of myself and i think that's good though i mean you know otherwise if you kind of lock in too much it sounds like you have the perspective like okay i know i'm who i am and who i'm who i might evolve further into um, but man, you meet people who are like, nope, this is it. This is how I am. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Cool. All the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, I get that. That's, it's, if well, there's sure. security in it. Sort of, exactly. It's like, yeah. I have no security. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's just floating, floating right on the wind. Well, like back, like was my, what my mother said, she, she said to me, you never figure it out. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, what, that's the most damning statement you could say to anybody, especially a kid. And I think she, she, I only heard that, but she kind of 
fleshed it out in saying that you have to give yourself a lot of compassion and latitude of like, if you feel like you're going to figure it out, it will change. So you just have to be flexible to sort of know who you are and change with stuff. But I interpret it as like, oh my God, I'm never going to figure it out. It's like every time I play the lottery. Yeah. I'm going to win this time. Oh, I'm you don't, absolutely wow. going to win this time. Yeah, you don't, I've, you don't I've know how done to play the math. lottery. I have, <laughs> or you don't I have know. gone to the right gas station. This is a winning ticket, I guarantee you. Oh, you might have Asperger's. <laughs> it's it's uh, not impossible. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, I've know. been told that by many people. It can yeah. be a lucrative uh, little uh, sure. situation. Absolutely. Make movies about guys about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> What is that show? There's a show on. There's another great show on. Uh, Speechless. Oh yeah. Have you seen that show? Yeah, Bowie's on it. Yeah, My friend John Ross Bowie. Oh, that's. Yeah. It's incredible. Oh, it's that's absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's great. I remember uh, John is John of our group was he and I were kind of the 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 late comers to acting, and we both it took a lot for us to give ourselves permission to do it, and but he was the first one to start getting like cast he got cast in this this pilot or this show called AUSA that had Scott Foley and some other people in it mm-hmm. and and we were like oh my god now he's like on a, on a TV series and then it got canceled and he just had like a, a a long kind of like run of like almost getting the pilot or you know almost getting into a series and stuff and I remember saying to him I was like this, this stuff doesn't happen without merit you know it was like you are very talented and and you people like you uh, in these series so it will happen at some point and he literally like was speechless he just kind of he's like he just backed away from acting he's like he literally says like i I had to kind of give up to 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 get what i wanted which is a you know big old zen wow that's (laughs) quite profound yeah and i think it was that thing of like he if you hold on to something so tight you're gonna choke it and so he was like oh i need to invest in myself and do my life and stuff I'm so happy for him because he's so great. Like, and it's a great show. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a very like my daughter loves it's, it, and it's very funny, extraordinarily poignant. Yeah, it doesn't. And it does it, it very well. It's yeah, written so well. Yeah, they don't overdo it with yeah. the. You know what I'm saying? They with don't the, hit you with, over the head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. but it's it's just so wonderful. They do. Bob's does that well too. Like, yes, you know they'll have a little music cue shift and. But they don't sort of let it sit too long. You know, they'll they'll twist it back and, and do something funny right on the button, you know, the end of the sort of like the message. And it's good. Like I remember my daughter the first time she kind of caught there's like, oh wait, that's the heartfelt part of the show. She made fun of it. Um, and then the next time it happened, she she like, Oh, here comes the heartfelt part, and she got really quiet and she's like, Okay, that was good. <laughs> you know, it was nice. It was like a cool thing. And she's sort of like, All right, yeah, you got me. Awesome. So, yeah, it's cool. It's cool, man. Well, unfortunately, no. That's the show. No, no. no. We just I okay. Just, well, let's just let it roll. Okay, letting it roll. I mean, we don't have to be here. Well, now, just dead air. <laughs> just do a very experimental nineteen-hour. Well, <laughs> dead. You know air. what? That might actually be kind of fun. I've I've thrown. <laughs> my engineer is super easy to edit. Shaking her head, she's like. Fuck no, I'm not being in here for 20 hours You just send out a compressed file that people will download. (laughs) You just get everybody's email, send them a zip file. They open it up. You guys got to... She is is giving us the look of absolute... She's pulling the wires out. She's trying to pull the wires out right now. She's smashing the console. Jesus Christ. We need that. Leave that there. We didn't get political, which is great. I mean, we can. Nah. What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what the fuck's the point? So you have Mr. Neighbor's House 2. Mr. Neighbor, let me do, this is a very yeah, professional part. do the part. official spiel. Guys, Mr. Neighbor House, <laughs> I can't even say the name of the show. Mr. Neighbor's House 2, June 24th at midnight on Adult Swim, right after the, I think right after the Robot Chicken premiere. And I believe we will be having a preview at the Los Feliz Theater on June 16th. I'm not sure if that's an open thing or not, but if it is, check for listings. I think we will be trying to show both of the episodes back to back. So you'll have some context if you don't know what the hell you're getting into. (laughs) 
and you probably won't even if you do have context. Right, even if when you're watching it, I was like, I don't know what's happening. It's pretty amazing. Thank you so much. Brian, where can people find you online, elsewhere? My Instagram handle is at the Brian Husky, and I do much more Instagramming than anything else. Uh, same handle for Twitter, uh, at the Brian Husky. And uh, that's pretty much it. Facebook, I don't know. Meh. Yeah, uh, give away your data <laughs> if you want to. Yeah, Same everybody's thing. escaping Facebook. Not that I'm doing that with Instagram. No, it's totally separate from Facebook. <laughs> I've done the research. I know what's going on. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That's it. I don't know. Keep Do your best, guys. 110%. That's right. That's the message. Keep doing the thing. Do the thing. Do the thing. As always, you can find me at Devlin Wilder at all the places and this show at Faux Real Pod. That's F A U X R E A L P O D. Thank you so much, Brian, for Thank joining you. us. Thank you, Sam, for engineering the show. Great job, really Sam. appreciate it. See you on the next one. All right, guys. Thanks for coming by. What, are we done? Where, That's it. Is it still rolling? It is. Oh, okay. But yeah. I mean, it actually doesn't end until we sort of, sort of I mean, That's you ended right. it, we, right? We can, I mean, if you want to sit here for the next nah, 20 hours. We didn't get political. <laughs> I'm done. Let's get out of here. Thanks again for joining us. I'd like to thank Sean Offenbeck, my editor, Sam Junio, my engineer, producer, Emily Sex, games producer, Libby Ward, and the entire team at the Faux Real Podcast Show. Remember, as always, you can follow me across all the things at Devlin Wilder and this show across Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Faux Real Pod. That's F-A-U-X-R-E-A-L-P-O-D. That's it. See you on the next one.